Hi, this is Lori, and this is my homework for Paul McCorder's Pico W course, lesson number 15. In this lesson, we're supposed to use for loops to ask the user for a sequence of basic colors and then light that sequence on our RGB LED. So as I thought about the homework assignment, I decided to add a little bit uh, extra challenge to it. I will do the assignment as uh, as described by Paul, where I'll just use one uh, RGB LED and light the sequence from the user. And as I started to think about it, I said, wouldn't it be fun if we could have a sequence of RGB LEDs and they would, uh, you know, show the history of the color sequence. So just thought I'd make a little diagram here. So when I describe the um, code I have, it'll make maybe a little bit more sense. The RGB LED closest to the Pico on my breadboard will be the current color. And then uh, as we move through the colors, the current color will move to the previous spot and the new current color will show up on this one. And then they'll kind of progress down the four RGB LEDs. Now I, I went with uh, four of them because you start to run out of uh, pulse width modulation uh, channels, so uh, I thought four was, was sufficient. Folks might remember from uh, Paul's uh, lesson on pulse width modulation that all the GPIO pins can do pulse width modulation, but there are only so many channels, and as you start to think hooking up uh, you know, four RGB LEDs, you uh, start to use up quite a few of them. I was a little bit strategic about using this side of the Pico, as you can see here, because all of these are separate um, pulse width modulation uh, channels, and the, some of them are repeated over here. Uh, so if you stick to this side and use these pins, you won't by accident connect up your pulse width modulation objects to the same uh, channel. So that's uh, something to keep in mind when you hook this many uh, objects up to the pulse width modulation. Just zoomed a picture of uh, my breadboard so you could see how everything was laid out. Um, I chose to use some of the loopy wires. I actually find if you're very careful with your coloring and you line them up against each other, they're actually pretty neat and tidy. And you can see them coming back here along the GPIO pins um, to to connect all these uh, all the RGB uh, pins into pins on the Pico. I've got each of them grounded here, and then here's the four LEDs, RGB LEDs, all set up. Now I'm going to use this little uh, little block so that we can see the colors better once I start filming. But that's how my breadboard's laid out. So the first program I put together was to just practice setting up this many RGB LEDs and um, just test to make sure I had all the wiring done correctly. Uh, in this one we'll uh, import the needed modules and here are the pins that I'm using. So I, I kind of grouped them by colors, red pins, green pins, blue pins. And so 15, 14, and 13 are the RGB that will show the current color, and then the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And I'm going to set up uh, all of the red LEDs in a list called red names, and loop through them, and set the frequency, and set them off. And I'm just using some uh, a pen to the list, just trying out some different functions to see how it goes, and we'll print those to the screen. Then we'll do the same for the green and the blue. And uh, I'm going to continue to use uh, the 8-bit scale for RGB colors, which is 0 to 255. Um, we know that our duty U16 function will want a 0 to 65,535. So I'll just do uh, some bitwise operations to shift those numbers into that scale. So that's what this uh, bitwise operation is doing. And we'll loop through the red ones first and turn them all on full at 255. Then we'll turn off the red, and turn on the green, sleep a couple of seconds. Then we'll turn off the green and turn on the blue. And uh, we'll make sure everything's turned off at the end, turning everything off. So it's just a simple little program to see if we get it to go. Let's go ahead and run it. There we 
we go. There's the red. And green and the blue. There we go. And you can see uh, how those uh, pulse width modulation objects are named. There's a slice and a channel. Zero and one, we saw that in the um, naming structure on the pinout for how um, the Pico was set up for pulse width modulation. So it just shows you how the, the channels are uh, named. Here's the program I used to do the homework from Paul, where we're going to use that RGB LED, get the sequence of colors they wish from the user. We'll import our needed modules. We'll set up the RGB LED on 15, 14, and 13 pins. I'm going to use the dictionary to look up the RGB codes for the colors. And instead of using text for the colors this time, I'm going to use numbers because I think it's going to be easier for the user to input numbers rather than having to write out red, green, and blue, type all that. Um, be simpler for them to input the sequence to us. I'm going to explain all that to uh, the user with some print statements show them the colors and what number goes with which color and how to put in the sequence with just some spaces in between. Now that means when I read that using the input I'm getting a string of uh, numbers with spaces in between and I kind of looked around to see how could I efficiently read in that string and split it apart because I really want to get a list of the integers to loop through. And I found on Stack Overflow a very nice piece of code that somebody had put together. And I think this kind of one-liner is called a list comprehension. And uh, very efficient, but I think it can be a little difficult to follow if you haven't looked at them very often. So I wanted to make sure I truly understood what this uh, list, uh, list comprehension actually did. So I tried to do it in steps. So I'm going to go ahead and read in the sequence. As a, as a string. Then I'm going to split it apart. So it's going to split apart all the uh, numbers uh, into individual strings. Then I'm going to create an uh, empty user color list. This is going to be the list that's going to have the integers in it for me for those colors. I'm going to loop through the color string from 0 to the length of it. And I'm going to create my user color um, list by uh, appending on the integer of the next one in line from the string, and that'll get me a list of integers that the user inputted. So I've got that now, and this would certainly do the same thing and be much more efficient than all this code, but uh, just did that to, to get better at those sorts of things. Now we're going to loop through the user colors. We're going to go get the code out of our colors dictionary. So we'll look up the number, get our RGB code, and uh, then we'll go ahead and light the red, green, and blue using the, the three components of the code. And I'll use this shift uh, bitwise operation so that I can take my 0 to 255 uh, scale into the 0 to 65,535 scale that the U16 function expects. We'll sleep uh, for two seconds, so we'll light each color for two seconds, loop through all of them, and then we'll turn everything off. And since I have this in a while true loop, uh, it'll keep going until the user presses a, a keyboard interrupt, and then we'll make sure everything's turned off at the end. So let's let this go. There we go. And uh, let me try just something pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five. And that should get us red, green, blue, cyan, and magenta. Let's see, red, green, blue, cyan, and magenta. That turned off, and it came back and asked us to uh, put in another sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, and it stopped. Here's my final program that will use all four of the RGB LEDs, and we'll have the sort of memory or of the sequence as we go. And uh, everything's pretty much the same in terms of the setup, so we'll move quickly through that. Here's our dictionary, and here we get into the while true loop. We'll still do the same sort of input from the user, and uh, once we get uh, the user colors all set up, we'll, we'll do something that I call kind of padding the color list 
with black at the beginning and some black at the end. And uh, that'll allow, um, when we first start, that this one will be lit, the current one, at the very first, and these three will be black. And then at the end of the sequence, we'll kind of move and turn off the uh, previous ones and just have the last one lit with the color, and everything will turn off. So uh, that was kind of the key point for me to figure out how I could loop through this using a for loop and get it all to happen without a lot of if statements or something like that. So um, the, the RGB3, kind of the last one on the list, it actually gets the first place in this user color, which will be a 9 at the start. The second one will also be a 9, and the, the 1 will be a 9, and then the current color will be the very first one in the user color list. And then you can see at the end, it'll uh, sequence off so that we kind of uh, move the colors and turn them off all the way through. Uh, so that was kind of the key thing to making this work in the loop, at least how I was envisioning it. So we'll uh, get the codes from our dictionary here by doing that little bit of looping. And then we just need to turn everything on from the current one all the way to the, the past ones. And we'll just pull up the 0, 1, 2, and 3 color codes, sleep for two seconds, and allow it to loop through all the colors. Then we'll turn everything off and come back to the top and ask the user for another sequence. And if we do our uh, keyboard interrupt, then we'll turn everything off. Let's see it go. All right, so we can input a sequence of numbers. So I'm going to do one, two, three. Um, and just to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to switch uh, some of the some of the numbers around. So let's see, what haven't we done? We haven't done a seven, um, and we didn't do a six. Okay, so we've got quite a few of the all the colors in here, and uh, let's watch it go. There we go. This first one. And that's working correctly because we asked for red, green, and blue in an order. Yep. There's the orange and the yellow. And it's turning off. <laughs> that was fun. I really enjoyed that. And it was fun to uh, kind of practice and figure out how to do the looping and how to pad in the list so that uh, I could get the effect that I wanted. Well, it was a great uh, homework, Paul. Thank you for the lesson, and uh, thank you for watching.